Today we are talking about the plugin Sooth2 by the company Oak Sound. Before we dive into this though, I want to tell you about my Discord. Nani? Just join the Discord. So, what is Sooth? Sooth is a tool that allows you to remove resonant frequencies from any type of sound source and with that it allows you to clean up sounds that might otherwise be unusable. Sooth is made up out of two sections. We got the main control panel on the left and on the right side we have a graph. Don't be fooled though, this graph is not a parametric EQ. Instead, this graph controls the reduction of the resonant frequencies. Here we can also find our analyzer, which will show us the resonant peaks in real time. In the left panel, we can select between two modes of reduction, soft and hard, with soft being a more subtle and transparent type of reduction, while the hard mode allows us to get very surgical and aggressive at the expense of introducing more artifacts. Below the two modes, we have a big depth parameter. This controls the global amount of reduction applied by the plugin. When I now play our ride loop and bring up the depth parameter to start introducing the reduction, pay close attention to what happens to the analyzer in the right panel of the plugin. As I raise up the depth parameter, we can see that in the analyzer some valleys appeared, which respond to the incoming audio. These are the resonant frequencies present in the ride loop that Sooth has detected and is now trying to reduce in volume. The higher we raise the depth parameter, the more pronounced these values show up on our analyzer, which translates to more reduction of those specific frequencies. Right away we can see that in this specific ride loop we have some louder resonances in the higher mid frequencies and some quieter resonances above and below it. We can also see that the louder resonant frequencies are quite sustained since they are present in this graph during most of the sound, while we can also see that the higher resonances are more transient. We can see this because they are showing up as deep valleys which then decay back towards the middle line of the graph until the next right hit comes in. This is how we can see that the higher resonances make up part of the transient of the ride, while the lower resonances are more present in the tail. Underneath the big depth parameter we can find two additional parameters, the first one being sharpness. This controls the width of the cuts that Sooth will perform, with higher settings being a lot more precise and allowing you to get very surgical while at the lower settings doing more tone shaping because the plugin's reduction is less precise. To demonstrate this, let's raise the sharpness to the highest value and then raise up the depth parameter. The selectivity parameter next to it affects how the reduction is applied, with lower settings being more suited for processing noisier material while higher settings focus more on the resonant frequencies itself. I honestly don't exactly know how this works under the hood, but even without that, just moving this parameter around while applying a good amount of reduction will get you an idea of which settings work best for the sound you're working on. Below these controls we have the stereo placement section where we can choose between two modes of operation. By default, Sooth operates in the stereo mode, but we can also switch this to mid-side mode to process the mid-channel separate from the sides. By default, Sooth will analyze the incoming stereo audio and calculate the average reduction and apply the same amount of reduction to both the left and right or mid and side channels. Sometimes though, you might need different amounts of reduction in either channel, which we can do by reducing the link parameter. At 0%, this means we now get different reduction on both the left and the right channel, depending on the resonances present in those channels. Whereas at 100%, it performs in its default way, meaning the left and right channel get the same reduction applied. With lower link values, Sooth will therefore also potentially affect the width of a sound, since the two channels are processed different from each other. Finally, the balance control specifies how much reduction is being applied to each of the two channels and allows us to, for instance, apply the reduction only to the left or right channel in the stereo mode. On the right side of the big depth parameter, we can find the time controls that allow us to shape the attack and release times. Lower attack settings tell the plugin to start reducing immediately when a resonant frequency is detected, while higher attack settings allow the transient of the resonances to come through more before the reduction kicks in. The release controlling how long it takes for the reduction to reset itself to the default value of no reduction when the resonance drops below a certain level. 
Below these controls, we have the quality section, which contains our oversampling and resolution parameters. Oversampling internally bumps up the sample rate, so you get less artifacts on higher frequencies, and the resolution increases the global quality of the reduction being applied. Both these also have a big effect on your CPU use, of course, so depending on the use case, you might want to adjust these. There's also a sidechain input present underneath this, which honestly I haven't used yet, and that is simply because I haven't found a problem in which I needed to sidechain soothe, but some of you will find this very useful probably. If you know what you would use soothe sidechain input for, then please leave a comment below so we can all learn from it. Finally below this we have our mix and output section. Here you can find the global dry web mix of the plugin, which controls how much maximum reduction is applied. And the trim control allows us to increase the output volume of Sooth to make up for any lost gain. Last but not least, underneath this we can find the delta switch, which at any times allows us to listen to exactly what Sooth is removing. And underneath that we have the bypass switch, which simply turns the processing off altogether. Now that is it for the main controls of the plugin, but there's obviously a big section left we need to talk about and that is the graph on the right side of this window. This is where we control the reduction curve and it allows us to increase or decrease the reduction per frequency range. Like I said earlier, this looks very similar to a parametric EQ but works slightly different. If we boost one of the nodes on this graph, we actually tell Sooth to apply more reduction around that specific frequency area. while cutting results in less reduction. This way we can really shape how Sooth applies the reduction across the frequency spectrum or even use the different filter shapes to tell Sooth to not do any reduction in certain frequency areas at all. In my opinion, this is where Sooth really shines. No need for crazy multiband processing, Sooth does this all automatically. You can click on the notes to bring up the settings for that specific note, which gives you control over the filter shape and its other settings. So let's use these controls to remove just a very specific part of this write loop. Let's try removing the bell-like sound at the start of the write, which then decays throughout each hit. These correspond mostly to the loudest resonances present in the mid-frequencies we talked about earlier. I'm going to enable both the low cut and the high cut filters and create sort of like a bandpass filter with them around these two resonant frequencies. Then I'm going to use another node set to the bell shape to accentuate this reduction on these frequencies. You can now hear we have almost removed the bell-like sound in the ride completely, while the ride itself still sounds very usable. It has changed its sound and tone and it has become more noisy, but it definitely still sounds good. The transients of the ride feel more controlled and that really resonant metallic bell-like sound has been removed. Some things I often do when making hi-hat patterns for electronic music is select a whole bunch of one-shot hi-hat samples and drop them all inside of a drum rack in Ableton. This allows me to draw in some MIDI and play around with the different positions of the notes to get different patterns very easily. I find this a lot easier than selecting just a few hat samples and making a pattern with those because I often don't know beforehand which samples will work best for the track I'm working on. I can make a guess, but Often it's the happy accidents that appear that result in sounding the best, so this method really works for me. I often will select samples from different sources, which then obviously will also sound quite different, especially when they're not from the same sample pack. The samples are probably processed differently from each other, so using them together to form a pattern might not really sound cohesive. In the end, you want your hi-hat patterns to sound somewhat realistic as if the pattern is played on a single drum kit, as opposed to being made out of a few random samples. We can use Sooth to do this. Here I have a Hyatt pattern that plays a randomized pattern triggering one-shot Hyatt samples that came from a variety of sources. By applying Sooth to these and allowing Sooth to detect the individual resonances in all of the hits, we can now reduce these resonant frequencies which will make all of the hats sound closer to one another. The more you reduce these resonances, the more noisy the hats will get, but it also makes them sound more cohesive as if they came from the same sound source.
Now obviously, trained ears might still be able to tell these are one-shot samples, but within a full mix, this will be a lot harder to tell. This is also probably not one of your most straightforward uses of Sooth or what it was originally intended for by the developers, but hey, it works great, so why not use it? The next example is a section of synth chords that have individual pitch bends applied to the notes of the chords. This is a clear example of what Sooth is really good at. Because the pitches of the chords change over time, the resonances within them are also not fixed to one frequency. Now let's say there is a frequency in there that you don't like. You could try removing it with an EQ, but the moment the chords change, you will probably have to automate the frequency inside of the EQ to make the cut follow along with the change in pitch. Now, let's assume that there's not one, but three or four nasty frequencies you want to get rid of, and you can start to understand how cumbersome it would be to remove those. Because Sooth analyzes the incoming audio and therefore is aware of the change in pitch, it will also apply the reduction only where it's needed. And because Sooth knows where these resonances are, there's no need to automate any frequencies. Sooth kind of already does that automatically under the hood. This made removing some of the harsh frequencies within this synth a lot easier and it also prevents you from removing parts of the sound which aren't part of the resonances itself. Okay, so that leads us to the final example, which you've all been waiting for. Let's really put Sooth to the test. Right here, I have another project, and in this one, I have a percussion sound, which kind of sounds like that old ticking clock your grandmother has on her living room wall. At least I know mine does. But what if I told you that this is not the sound of a clock? I found this interesting foley sound of some gears and cranks in a cinematic sample pack, and I thought that it sounded really interesting and could potentially be an interesting percussion sound. So I looped a short section and stretched it around to get a two beats long section with a hit on each beat. But because both hits were stretched with different amounts in re-pitch mode, they now also had different pitches and thus different resonances. Now at this point I never knew this would become a ticking clock. And normally I would have probably never thought of using this sound at all because in all honesty, it sounds quite unusable. So right away, Sooth to the rescue. And since this sound needs a lot of work, I picked the hard mode for this one instead, while all the previous examples simply used the soft mode. As you can see, we're doing pretty much full frequency spectrum reduction, but I'm also increasing the amount of reduction in the mid frequencies by boosting within the graph on the right side of Sooth. This already gets rid of a lot of the nasty resonances in the sound and gets us at a much better starting point to making the sound work. There are still quite a lot of resonances left though, but I first added some EQ to get rid of the low frequencies because we simply don't need those at all. However, after this I added another sooth to try and reduce the remaining resonance frequencies. You really have to play around with the sharpness and selectivity controls in combination with shaping the graph on the right, but with a bit of work you can get very close to removing them completely. After this I decided to do some slight transient shaping to make the sound more percussive and then also decided to use Melba's M Transformer to do some pitch shifting. This however also created some new resonances I didn't like. So you guessed it, I needed another sooth to clean this up.
After this, I did some slight EQ to shape the resulting sound and that pretty much did the job. Sooth had made this completely quote unquote unusable sound usable again, which actually amazed me quite a bit. Now, the people at Oak Sound were kind enough to hand me a copy to do this video, and I will continue to use this on a regular basis during my live streams and other videos. But they have also sent me their other plugin, Spiff, to give that one a test run. Spiff works very similar to Sooth, but does something else. It's kind of a transient shaper, and it, I probably will have to do a separate video on this some other day, but for now I tried using it to improve our ticking clock sample. By increasing a bit of the high frequencies in the transient of each hit, it became a lot more convincing as the sound of a ticking clock. I haven't played around with this plugin too much yet, but I can already see that this will probably work just as well as Sooth does, and might eventually replace some of the other transient shapers that I own. I did however learn that it's also easy to overdo it, and fall into this endless void of adding Sooth to everything in your mix because, well, it makes things more soothing. But with that, you can also suck the life out of the track completely, if you apply it to literally everything, and most people I've spoken to about Sooth all said they went through this short phase where they did this, but then quickly realized to back it down. Sooth makes certain issues irrelevant and it can make things better, but it needs to be used in moderation. Kind of like a good drink. Speaking about drinks, if you want to buy me one or buy me a cup of tea, then I have a Patreon where you can support my channel and help me out. On my Patreon you can find extra content like samples, patches and other production related stuff, so if you can, it would mean a lot. That's going to be it for this video. Let me know in the comments what interesting things you have found to use Sooth for, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.